Hi, welcome to Silent Symptoms, a black mental health podcast. So if you are interested in watching a video about my take on the Jesse Smollett fiasco, go ahead and take a listen. Hi, welcome to Silent Symptoms, a black mental health podcast. I am real host, Katasso Fridge, a Florida-based therapist. This podcast focuses on mental health, stigmas, and social injustices that affect the black community. This podcast was created to bring awareness about mental health and can be used as an educational guide, but this is not to be used as a replacement for seeking help from a therapist. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about the Jesse Smollett scandal, or whatever you want to call it. This is part of my social justice and social injustice portion of the podcast. So I want to call this stop saving or canceling other people. So the reason I say that is because when the first time the story broke about Jesse Smollett, in a little bit I'm going to uh, allow you guys to watch the video so you guys can know what I'm talking about and if you're not watching the podcast you will hear the audio so Jesse basically said that he was a victim of a hate crime which was based on his race and his sexuality so this is what he had to say I went to the subway and got the order during that time i texted my manager thinking that he was still in australia because he was on an australian tour with one of his other clients Mm -hmm. and i said yo call me when you can he called me immediately and while he was on the phone i uh, heard as i was crossing the intersection i heard empire and i don't answer to empire (laughs) my name ain't empire uh and i didn't answer i kept walking and then i heard Empire. So I turned around and I said, the f- did you just say to me? I and mean, I see the uh, attacker uh, masked. And he said, this MAGA country punches me right in the face. So I punched his ass back. And then um, we started tussling. You know, it was very icy. And we ended up tussling by the stairs, uh, fighting, fighting, fighting. There was a second person involved who was kicking me in my back. And uh, then it just stopped. And they ran off. And I saw where they ran. And the phone was in my pocket, but it had fallen out. And it was sitting there. And my manager was still on the phone. So I picked up the phone and I said, Brandon. And he's like, what's going on? And I said, I was just jumped. And I, then I looked down and I see that there's a rope around my neck which I hadn't You hadn't noticed it before? No, you didn't because speak? it was so fast. You know what I'm saying? It was so fast. How long did this all It felt take like a- minutes, but it probably was like 30 seconds, honestly. I can't tell you, honestly. Um, I noticed the rope around my neck, and I started screaming. And I said, there's a rope around my neck. Did you get any kind of description of the attack? I gave a body description, and I, you know, because I saw this, but and you know, right here or whatever, but I didn't see, I can't tell you what color their eyes were. I can't tell you. And I did not see anything except the second person I saw running away. And the first person, yeah, I saw, saw his stature. I gave the description as best as I could. You have to understand also that it's Chicago in winter. People can wear ski masks and nobody's gonna question that. So as you can see in the video, Jesse describes what he has been going through. So he's describing that night as something that was terrifying for him. And apparently, um, two guys tried to attack him. Well, they did, and they put a noose around his neck. So when these first came out, everyone was on the Jesse bandwagon everybody was there to save him everybody was there to have an opinion about how racist white people are and how the Amer- make america great again hats are are the representation of the trump administration so which got a lot of people riled up because this is something real that people do go through people do face you know uh racial slurs people do uh 
face hate crimes because of their um, sexuality. So Jesse felt as though this was one of the moments. So people started trying to jump to Jesse to try to save him for whatever reason. At this point, when everybody was trying to be there for him, go to bat for him, and, you know, sending him encouraging messages, they didn't know all the facts yet. I, for myself, was like, wait a minute. This is very shocking. I felt bad about the situation. But I didn't have an opinion on it publicly because I always like to wait for things to play out. I feel as though as a society, we're so quick to try to save others without waiting for the facts to come. And with this situation, it went and turned into something awful. So allegedly, they the Chicago Police Department says that they have evidence that he actually orchestrated this attack. So they said that he hired two brothers um, to attack him, pour bleach on him, and put a noose around his neck. And he paid the brothers $3,500, and they have evidence of the check. And upon their return, because they went to Nigeria for about two weeks, and upon their return, he was going to give them $500 in cash. And they also have evidence that Jesse had been in communication with the brothers. So when this first came forward and the people, the two brothers got arrested, people were like, I thought he said these people were white. Well, he said he saw them around the eyes and they appeared to be white. That's neither here nor there. That is an important piece, but you know, it doesn't mean that you could be a black person and still go to bat for Donald Trump. We see it, it happens all day. So that's not really relevant to a point unless obviously other people who are seeking justice are looking for white people to represent what he said. So it puts me to this point. We're so quick to hurry up and save people. And now that everything is coming out and people are starting to call Jesse a liar. Even though the Chicago Police Department has not officially released all of their evidence, we are already canceling Jesse. So how do we go from canceling and saving or saving and cancel, canceling the other way around that quickly? The thing is, the media is so dangerous for our mental health. While I was watching the video with Jesse, I could clearly see in his eyes and his demeanor that something was happening with him something was distressing him something about him just didn't seem right he did have all the emotions but it appeared as though in the root of him it seemed very dark like there was anger in there there was a mix of sadness so for me i was trying to analyze it from a mental health state point standpoint because I feel like there's more to the story than just him allegedly lying. And as we know, the Chicago Police Department is infamously known for trying to, you know, set people up and do different things for their own agenda. And, you know, they try to cover up the Laquan McDonald murder. It took them a very long time to get to the point where they would give us evidence of his death or trying to indict the people who were responsible for his murder all the people that helped in trying to cover up everything it took them a long time so I'm always very skeptical of different police departments especially those who don't have the greatest reputation so I always like to get all the evidence before I make my opinion and you know I'm recording this video on a Friday it's gonna come out on a Tuesday so there may be more development so I'm basing it on everything that has happened before the weekend so we may get more information we may not so from my analysis it appears that you know there's something going on with Jesse and whether we he's telling the truth whether he's lying that does not matter. I feel as though because the media creates such a divide and the social, the media doesn't really always tell the truth. So 
the problem with social media we run to social media to get all the information that we should be researching ourselves so the first thing somebody puts out there we want to believe and run with it how about we take a moment to research what we're reading research all the stuff that we're putting into our body and putting into our minds because there's such a thing called propaganda sometimes they want you to steer you to pay attention to the things that aren't really relevant. Because I feel as though this Jesse Smollett situation should not have been this huge. Obviously, we want justice for hate crimes, but why is it such a big deal? Because there are other hate crimes that are coming around full circle. Maybe because he's on Empire. So allegedly, he did all this to get a salary raised. So now I'm really struggling to figure out what gain would he have to actually cooperate this entire thing put it out in the atmosphere get the law involved get these two brothers in such a mess i don't know if he wanted them to get caught or not but at the end of the day if he did orchestrate it i'm thinking what type of person would actually do that anybody that is in that right state of mind would never do such a thing i mean being in the spotlight is already hard enough but I have a hard time with thinking that he would do all of this for a raise. For a raise, though? Because I feel like, you know, there are other ways to obtain raises. You can actually be someone that, you know, speaks up for gay rights, speaks up for racial uh, divides, speaks up and against immorality, all kinds of stuff. There are other ways to get endorsements and such but a lot of people think that oh well he needed the fame well at this point he's well known his family is wealthy what more is he looking for another thing i would say maybe there's something deeper inside of him he probably feels like he's not heard for him to take it to this magnitude there's something inside of him that is missing we're looking at all the things that are over the surface. Oh, attention seeking. What if he is that little boy that feels like he's he he's not heard because he's gay? What if he feels like the only way to get to the masses to talk about the racial divide in this country and the hate and the racism that we experience on a daily basis is through this magnified lie, quote unquote. Maybe he was doing it for personal gain, but why would somebody put themselves in harm's way to that point? It's really hard for me to wrap my head around it. Now, if I want to look at it at the surface, I'm just going to call it attention seeking. But the problem is that when things come out, we don't take the time to figure out what's really happening to a person internally. We're just like, ah, he just needs attention. We don't respect him because he's a liar. Don't we lie every single day of our lives? I'm trying to understand. I've never met a person in life who has never lied. And I'm sure we've all done illegal things. We just didn't get caught. Everyone that has an opinion, have a brother and sister that have done things to get attention. Then we have rapists in the family, molesters robbers killers all of that but we're gonna cancel someone for trying to cooperate a hate crime which is very wrong by the way but we forget to look at our own backyard and the people that we say free such and such when they've actually killed other people we need to stop being so quick to save others before we have all our facts and to cancel them why can't we move forward and try to forgive him for the things that he has done what's wrong with that we don't know the premise of why he did what he did whether he told the truth or not or whether he lied he's still sticking to his story and say he did not lie and from watching the video with the Chicago Police Department, not to say that they're not telling the truth, it seems as though the superintendent was stuck on getting reimbursed and how Jesse was making the city look bad. So what? I'm sure that if, you know, Empire was filmed in Los Angeles, that's where he would have staged the hate crime if he actually staged it. 
It's not about Chicago or he probably would have done it in Detroit. I, it seems as though he took it as a personal attack versus a situation that was isolated. And um, he kept referencing resources. He would reimburse us those resources or resources were wasted. You may or may not be trying to get that money back that you spent on that investigation. Do you do that to other people who aren't as privileged as Jesse? Come on, let's be real. And then the thing is, we need to be able to provide the support for someone who may be lost and try to go to a place of forgiveness. We're humans. We lie. We cheat. We steal. We accuse. I can't even begin to tell you all the black men that have been blamed for things that have never done. Let's talk about Emmett Till. He got murdered for looking at a white woman, which he actually didn't. And the white woman said he tried to make a pass at her and got him murdered. And then just last year, she says she made up the whole entire thing. Was she indicted? Oh, I forgot. We have something called the statute of, of limitations. Oh, it'd be too hard to try to go after her if she were still here. Stop trying to cancel and say that Jesse has brought us back. What has he brought us back from? He's really given more attention to social injustices, racism, LGBTQ rights. That's all he's really shining a light on. And I know that some people may say that it makes it seem like um, it makes it harder for other victims because the police officers are going to be skeptical. They were already skeptical to begin with. So if you are a victim, please report all the crimes. All these notions of we getting set back. We still live in a racist country. Where are we getting set back from? R. Kelly literally has been known to allegedly molest, marry, fondle, rape, beat women. They just did a surviving R. Kelly docuseries and there's still black men and women is saying they will not. Stop listening to R. Kelly. They refuse to believe it. But Jesse Smollett lied, didn't harm anyone. And we're quick to cancel him. We need to get our priorities, priorities straight. Because at the end of the day, look at how much evidence they have against him. It's minimal, but it may make a difference to a certain point. But of course, they're going to try to make an example out of him. If in fact, he did lie, they're going to try to make him reimburse the city for all of the resources that they used. Put him on probation or give him a little bit of jail time. Just make an example out of him for filing a false report. But we as a people have to band together and try to find it in our hearts to forgive Jesse for doing something that was unacceptable. But how come we're not trying to reach to the surface? A lot of people are saying that they're very disappointed because somebody could have gotten hurt, rightfully so. Absolutely. Somebody could have lost their life along the way and somebody would have tried to retaliate, but that didn't happen. And number two, think about the amount of work it takes to try to orchestrate such a thing. And allegedly, there was a letter that he wrote to himself and um, it was a threat about him and it has something to do with make America great again. I'm thinking, does he hate the president that much to go to that extent? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe this man is struggling with something deeper and felt like the way to reach out to the masses was to do something extreme for his own gain. So maybe he does need to get a psychological evaluation. Maybe he does some type, have some type of mental illness that we don't know about. 
That's why it's really important for us to be able to address things when people go to the extreme because they something deeper. None of this is over the surface. And what really infuriates me is that we go to bat for someone. Two minutes after a story comes out, we don't even wait a week to get evidence. And then something happens on the flip side. We are quick to say we have nothing to do with this situation because we are embarrassed for supporting something we didn't have enough evidence to support. And now we want to clear our conscience so we decide to cancel the person instead of finding out what's going on. That's the whole premise of the entire situation. If he stays just for a raise, it's more than just a raise. People don't do extreme measures just for a raise. If he wanted a raise, he could have set up, maybe done a sex tape or done something else. But involving the law, that is sick. That's not okay. That's not over the surface. This man needs help. And if it does come out that he got set up, then what are all of you naysayers going to say about that? Let's not be so quick to cancel, do all these things till the Chicago police releases evidence and finds them guilty. Who's to say that the brother's trying to save their own butts? And who's to say that Jesse is the victim? Oh, who's to say that Jesse wanted all of this to happen so he could get some type of attention and clout. It could go either way. So let's not be quick to save people and cancel them. Okay? So let me know what you guys think and your take on the whole Jesse Smollett thing. It has taken up so much of our time and energy where we could be focused on other things. But I just wanted us to say, hey, let's stop going to bat for people without evidence and stop canceling people without evidence, okay? So I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our podcast. You can catch us on Anchor and all your favorite media streams. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Silent Symptoms Podcast. Let us know if you have any feedback or topics that you would like to hear. 